and welcome to Festival Speaks. Today is Tuesday, February 20-something, and this is episode 160-something. Hi, how are you? I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. Are you doing well? I hope you are. Eek. So hopefully this week's episode will be a little bit briefio. That's not a real word. Um... But maybe I'll be done a bit of Monday. <laughs> um, because oh my gosh, the Nitty Pipeline Retreat is this weekend. Not ye. Oh, it is. It's this weekend. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was, but I had never said it was this weekend. Therefore, that's scary. I mean, not scary bad. This is scary a little bit bad. It's still always, no matter who, I shouldn't say that. But no matter how lucky I am to know human beings there, I still get nervous. Eek. Eek. Um, so, but I'm excited too. Yay. Um, so that's happening and that's on my mind. But then hopefully what I will do, what I will do, positive intention, people. What I will do is do another small episode next weekend. Next week. That's the word. Uh, to do like yay pipeline retreat yay this is what happened sort of kind of a little bit or maybe it'll just be like yay positive vibes knitting pipeline retreat it'll be something like that though it'll be that flavor um so and I, at that point I will also show you the bags that will be available in the fri in the first Friday of March update which I believe is Friday March 4th but I might be making that date up and I do not have a device here to check that information. And the paper device is far away that I cannot see it. So I, it's the first Friday in March. That's the day. <laughs> so there'll be a very nice update that weekend um, with lots of different stuff. Ding! Um, should I go? I don't think there are any. I did, I did have a, a oh, if only I were a GoPro 24-7. A, no, I would not, because hi, that'd be terrible. But in the future where there's a selective GoPro in my pupil and it only shows you when I activate it and I can delete it and there's no fear of the Big Brother seeing everything I see with my eyeballs, um, yeah, then that would be awesome. <laughs> right? I know, whatever. Uh, but I did take an exciting fall. That's kind of fun. We were walking the other day with the dogs. And um, and I am not hurt. FYI. Um, we were walking the other day with the dogs. And our dogs sometimes walk on the split lead. They do like a coupler, which I really enjoy. Because then the littlest dog always wants to be right next to the biggest dog. And if she's not right next to her, she gets like, ho, ho, ho. Because the first dog is trained pretty well, uh, but the second dog is not. It's, she's totally a second child. Like, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> she's a hellraiser. She <laughs> she's really cute, unfortunately. That's probably why she would play with a lot. I know I'm terrible, right? I'm like an anti-dogamist. Like a feminist, but for dogs, but not a feminist. I, I'm just really letting her get away with stuff because she's super cute. That's wrong on many levels. But there you have it. I'm proud of society and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, this is a great thing because when they're on two different leads and you're trying to... Oh, so the other option is to walk them with the same person with both leads. And then that's always crazy pants. It gets like a ballet act to get that stuff together. Because they twist around you and you're like in a movie that's a romantic comedy. Except there's not... Hugh Grant there to rescue you. It's, you just fall, you know, it's like that. It's not good. So, <laughs> the dogs are on their coupler, which is usually a thing, except our child loves to have uh, crazy bursts of energy where she just needs to run, which is fine. Except then she runs with the dogs and then waits for us to catch up because I'm not running because there was no bear behind me. And even then I might take it on. But I'm not running either near here or there. So by the time I get to the dogs are all like swimming around and like throwing paper airplanes and stuff and like they got other things going on and then my husband and then they all and then somehow they all get tangled up together. It would 
I'll just walk. <laughs> You would just take your potato soup out as it comes, instead of straining it, everything would be fine. If you just do everything like I tell you to. Because <laughs> clearly, anyway, <laughs> sometimes you're a control freak because people need to be controlled. <laughs> so anyway, they all get tangled up. And the bad thing is I just gave the dogs haircuts because it's now warm enough and like Joanna sheared her sheep so therefore I can shear my dogs. I don't have anything to do with anything, whatever. <laughs> so the littlest one is much more poodly than the older one. The older one is schnauzery, so her hair is like long and, so it just gets long and slickery. But the poodle gets like, whoop, you know. So I gave her hair cut and she lost like 40 pounds. Why does that happen when I get a haircut? Just saying. But so she lost like a lot of body circumference, which means, and I didn't think to tighten up her carness. I know, right? It's my fault. So her, so, so when the twisting up happened and then the leash went over the little dog's head and as soon as it did, I was like, Nyeh! and so in slow-mo, I did like the crazy, like, Nyeh! and my fat jiggled as it went down in the wind. And then I was like, Argh! and I caught the, and I tackled the little dog. Don't worry, I didn't tackle with my body. I took the hit and wiped out on the walking trail, which is, of course, it couldn't be a dirt one at that point. Although it probably would have been mud, so it's fine. The paved walking trail <laughs> and like smashed the little dog to the ground like, don't fall. Because the older dog would be like, oh, you want me to come back? Okay. This little dog would be like, all of it. She'd be like, no, I'm having fun. She'd be like in a Girls Gone Wild video in like three days. She'd be in Bahamas. I don't know. <sighs> She's the second child. She's not as well trained as the first one. Anyway, so by the way, I apologize. I've now recorded the beginning of this podcast three times. So I'm not sure what I've said before and what I've not, and like what I've said in this one. So I apologize if I've repeated myself at some point. Uh, but that's, there was like an issue. Anyway. <laughs> so the little dog gets away with a lot. One of the things she gets away with is she's just not, you know, she's just, she would just be like, oh, humans and dogs, let's go with them. She would not even notice that we were calling for her. So I knew that I had to catch her, <laughs> otherwise it was going to be crazy. So I totally took one for the team. I love doing stuff like that. I know, that's weird. And it probably points to some serious personality flaws. I have them. But then I like all like banged up my elbows, totally scraped and skinned. And by the way, it's not that bad. I was convinced as I was walking that I felt just the blood dripping down my arm. It was just wet. <laughs> I had grand visions of getting back and like my shirt being all like just disc. It was not an episode of The Walking Dead. <laughs> I've never seen that show. I, don't, I guess zombies don't even bleed, so that would make a lot of sense. Whatever. I was. It was not that bad. <laughs> I was envisioning having this like giant, disgusting bruise on my hip. I have a bruise like this big, like where really just like the point of my hip bone poked through all my fat and smacked the other side of my skin. <sighs> I needed like a giant bruise so I could be like, see Olive? Because Olive cares, right? I totally fell on the, I just took a bullet for you. I know, I have personality flaws as we evidenced last week, last time. I just have them, I'm sorry. <laughs> so really there were no shenanigans. I need to do more stuff with my life so I can tell you about it, right? <sighs> um, so that was like the saddest, lamest story ever. Now I just realized how lame it was after I told it to you. I didn't really intend on telling it to you. That's before I had edited that out in my brain. Yeah, but whatever, it's fine. No friends, just, just, just whatever, it's fine. Um, what should we talk about? No, I don't know. Should we talk about knitting? Maybe we should do that. Okay, we'll talk about lentils next time. Because I probably won't have very much knitting to show you next time. Because <laughs> I'm going to retreat and I never get much knitting done. That's okay. Did I tell you that already? Again, I mentioned. I've already done this twice. Um. Okay, knitting and spinning. So let's talk about finished spinning. I finished my bats from Wool Pierogi. I just want pierogies every time I say her name. 
<sighs> pierogi day at school was the best. Well, it wasn't the best, but it was one of the best. So many carbs. So this is um, from Will Pierogi's Bath. It's called it's a bat set called Chalk Drawings. And Merino, BFL, Angelina Silk, all sorts of stuff. 3.6 ounces. And, oh, I forgot to write down. Oh, 225 yards. Right. Isn't it cute? Totally enjoyed it. It was very pleasant to spin. Oh, and I chain pined it. I... I don't know that I forgot how much I, but I really enjoyed chain plying this week. What? I had it build up in my head like it was going to be terrible. It was like super pleasant. As long as your single isn't breaky, which sometimes does happen, but I usually tend not to spin thin enough that my single is breaky. I do everything fat. Um, chain plying is so lovely. So, I don't know why, but it is just infinitely more pleasant than regular plying for me. Which doesn't make sense, because really, in my head, it's much scarier. Many more things can go wrong. Well, not wrong, but kind of. And yet, it's when you're actually doing it, oh, it's so zentastic. Lovely. I love it. And then I also finished my Coriadale, right? Coriadale from Quillen, Q-U-I-L-L-I-N, in the owl color way. And I also chain plied that. And this was four ounces and I got 385 yards. So it'll be a nice heavy fingering for a sock weight, for a sock. Right, I'm actually looking forward to knitting these, which I usually don't look forward to knitting socks, but I'm totally excited about it. Oh, I'm trying to decide if they should be my retreat knitting. Maybe they should. Maybe they should be my retreat knitting. Don't judge me if you see me at the retreat. My hand spin is not perfect. I mean, like, not even not not perfect. Like, it's like 75 degrees below perfect. It's like in the 25 percentile perfect. So don't judge me. Okay? Okay. Yay, it's totally fun. And it's natural testing. Yay, that. And then what I am currently spinning, oh my gosh, what I want to be spinning. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about what I'm spinning, but that dang Stephen West, dang him. He, re he released his excuse, I don't know what it's called. It's like the excuse me poncho. I totally want to make that stupid thing. I love... Okay, like I have sometimes trouble wearing the poncho in the public worlds. Uh, not the, uh, what was the one called? The, the lace weight one that everybody was like, I can't decide if I love this or hate this. The asymmetrical one. I can't hear what's called. Some of you are yelling at me. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Anyway, that I can totally wear in public and I feel like it's okay. I know it's like Portuguese. I just can't bring it to my face. Anyway. But this one, I don't know that I'll be able to wear in public because A, it's DK weight and it's um, in brioche. So it's definitely going to be a little bit chunky. And the other one that I can't think of the name of is very asymmetrical. And so I feel like that line when you're a fat lady is very elongating. And this one it has some asymmetry to it, but the line is m has a much gentler slope. The other one is like this. And the excuse me is more like this. So I don't know that it, I feel like it is not going to be at all flattering on me. But I still want it. Because I feel like it'll be the most awesome sauce um, TV watching poncho thing in the universe. And so I, okay, so that was the whole, like that was three minutes of me explaining that I really want to spin for it. I know I'm itching, I'm going to itch, it's winter. I really want to spin for it. So I really want to make that, but it came out after I started this, and I'm really excited about this, but dang it, I want to make that thing. But I want to make it out of hand spot. So, that has got to be the next thing I spin for. But right now what I'm spinning, this is just the very end of it. This is actually a lighter bit of it. Um, the beautiful and handsome and talented and good dancer. 
Uh, Steve of Leading Men Fiber Arts gave me this beautiful, um, I think it's a BFL. I didn't even really look, to be honest with you. It is from Yarn Geek Fibers, who will also be at the Dang Pipeline Retreat, along with Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is the Curry Up colorway. And this is actually, again, this is, majority of it is a little bit darker, like that color. So, I'm spinning that. And my thought is that I'm going to apply it with, this is my fiber optic gradient. It is from, well, it's from Fiber Optic Yarns. And it's 80% merino, 20% silk. And this is a steampunk gradient. And if you can tell, see, again, this is lighter piece. This is a bad example, but it's kind of like very similar to this lighter, the lightest color in this gradient. Oh, I don't, I just don't know if I should do it or not. It's like, do I chain? If I feel like if a chain ply is going to be too chunky. My thought was, this was my thought, is that I was hoping that if I apply them together, I would get like a sport weight and then I could make a super awesome foolproof cowl with a be but I don't know but ooh, wouldn't that be pretty the other option was to chain ply both of them but now I've spun this thick enough that I feel like if I chain ply it's going to be way too bulky I think it'll be fun though I think it's going to be great it's going to be great it's going to be great I haven't spun this thing because I'm afraid to so I just need to do it. Kimber will make more. I can get more at several different places. Kimber will make more. So, that's my thought. I think it's gonna be awesome. We'll see. I'm nervous. <laughs> On to knitting. Finish objects. I have an excuse me hat done. I have a ponytail on, so I don't know how well this will work. Oh, I think it's awesome that way. So, oh, super sexy. So this is the Excuse Me hat by Mr. Stephen West. And this is hand spun. This is, again, I'm wearing a ponytail. It's not styled appropriately. Uh, but this is, this is BFL, Superwash BFL from Into the World in the, I think it's the, is this the Kindred or is this the Don't Blink? I think this might be Don't Blink. And then the other side is a DK BFL that I dyed up. Right. Hold on a sec. Super fun. I need to make pom-poms for all of these. And I think I am going to go ahead and attach them. Because while they're gifts and not everyone's a pom-pom on their hat, it's pretty easy to take a pom-pom off, right? So, and again, you can wear it multiple ways, especially if you're not wearing a ponytail. I think it's totally fun. I was afraid that these were like way too out there for most people, but I think they're super fun. Like many of Stephen West's patterns, don't just go by that first picture. You know, if you're like, dude, I don't wear white eyeliner, so I don't think I can wear that hat. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to wear white eyeliner to wear a Stephen West pattern. I mean, it helps. But I do not own white eyeliner, and I still find his patterns very exciting. <laughs> oh. So there's that one. And then I have another one. Another one. Huh. So then this one is also the Stephen West, excuse me, hat. It is also in hand spun. This is hand spun. I think this is Merino from Spun Right Round. And I apologize. I don't know what colorway it is, but it's a colorway. There you go. And then this is Madeline Tosh DK in the hot red color. Hot red colorway. I always wish I had a nickname. And not hot red, but red would have been fun. <laughs> anyway, hot red. Um, and so, yeah. Yay. Thanks, Diane. Um, and so this is it so far. There it is. Wrong side so far. I know the wrong side is so fun in these. Well, I mean, wrong side. The good thing is, that, again, if you don't want to wear it as a slouchy hat, you can flip that brim up and that will be the right side on the bottom. So you get the best of both worlds. Right. Ooh. Okay. And so then the last thing I have to show you 
is my Sans Serif by Elizabeth Doherty. And this is knit with Harrisonville Designs Watershed in the Barn Door colorway. And it is not completely done, but it is pretty stinking close. Excuse me, I hiccuped at you. So the sleeves are done. The body is done, but I am working on the pockets, right? So all I have to do is finish the pockets and then sew on the buttons and then I will be done. So here's the pocket. The, the pocket, I, she has you cast off and then bind off cast on for the pocket. I just did an afterthought, but it doesn't matter. It works either way. And then the pattern is written for Quince and Company Worsted with um, a skein of the fingering weight in the same colorway, which is fun that Quince has that option. Um, so you work the pocket in the fingering weight just so it's not as bulky. Um, so, I, But I wanted to do contrast and then I wanted it to be something that meant something to me. So this is one of my hand dyes. <sighs> I know why I'm talking so much. So that's my pocket color. So I'm knitting the inside of the pocket. And then you just tack it down on the wrong side there. Right. Eek. And then I need to pick up, or see, I have this one just hanging out because I'll work the ribbing for the front on this. Does that make sense? So I did the sleeves. Sleeves are always a nervous making thing, especially since I tend to avoid sleeves. But I, I do love all my sweaters without sleeves. I washed them all this week and I was like, I love you sweaters. I feel like I did need to have one sweater with sleeves. <laughs> okay, maybe two. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad I chose this pattern. Uh, because what I did was, when I started to do the sleeve, I just did it like I thought I should. Instead of following Elizabeth Doherty's directions. Hubris. And I made it way too th big. Made the sleeve cap way too bulky. It was like ruched. And a ruched sleeve is not what you want. <laughs> Unless it's Elizabethan England, which it's not. I don't even know if that's right. I just made that up. But whatever. It sounds good. Um, so I got about this far and then I was like, yeah, this is totally not working. So I ripped it back and I did it like the pattern said. Oh my gosh, what a novel idea. Okay, but in my defense, the reason I didn't do it by the pattern was because I thought I had modified the sleeve too much, like the sleeve hole. I thought I had modified it too much to accept the uh, pattern as written, I, I, but it still worked. There you go. So instead of, uh, in my head, I was like, oh, I pick up three for four. And I feel like I, we have had this discussion before, you and I. Don't pick up three for four on a sleeve cap. Don't. Or a sleeve. I pick up three for four for button bands. Don't do it for a sleeve. Pick up two for three in a sleeve. What? I know I've said this to you before. I know I have. And yet, I have to keep learning these lessons. So anyway, so it works out to about two for three for the pickup. But she tells you exactly how many stitches you should have. And you just listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. And look at how good that sleep cap looks. Now, I will say I did mine a little bit different. She does her wraps. She leaves her wraps. And I knit mine in because I just do. I know why she left her wraps. It's one of the ways you can, if you just, if you um, pick up and then knit into those stitches, they will, they will have a hole, like it will look holy. Uh, so I just twist them when I knit them. And I like the way that looks. I like the way hers looked. I just felt more comfortable doing it the way. I'm not, it just purely aesthetic choice, not in any way a thing. But that is all to say. This is a sexy looking sleep cap. Look at that. Look at, it's not blocked, but come on, look at that. Right. What is that about? That's a good looking sleep cap. Also, I will say this. I was super nervous about this part. Um, it is like a scoop neck cardigan, which I like for the worsted weight. I feel like it's just a little bit less, you know. So, um, but it looked so low when I was working on it that I was like, this is going to look like a burlesque sweater. That's not a thing, but 
it's gonna look kind of weird. It's like gonna be below my bra line, and I was very nervous about it. Not that I'm gonna wear it without a, you know what I mean. But I was like, I don't know. But of course, it worked out fine. Because A, it starts to roll under because it's just stuck in it. And then there's, because it's not just the ribbing, you have this lovely welt. And by the way, again, I said it last week, but dang it, I love that welt on there. Right? Go look at welt. I want welts on everything now. And they're really not, it's like not that much extra work. But because it's not just that little bit of ribbing, it's like the whole, pro, like, it's a big chunk. And so it, trust her, it looks good. So hopefully I'll have that all ready and blocked to show you next time. I'm really trying to get it done for the knitting pipeline retreat. Not because it might be cool enough to wear it. Theoretically, it's cool enough to wear it, but I always get really hot in those rooms. Oh, I'm fatty and I get excited. So we'll see how that goes. But I want to wear it anyway. It's a knitter ball. You gotta do it. Is it all I have to talk about? I think so. Um. So yes, that is all for this week. And again, I hope to talk to you next week.